Good morning, everybody, and once again, welcome back to the channel. In today's hands-on lab, we are going to learn how to use a Trino as a compute engine and ingest data from your raw zone into the managed iceberg table, which is S3 table buckets, incrementally. Uh, we'll also probably do some compaction, and all of this, you can execute it locally on your uh, laptop using Docker containers. So if you are excited to learn, uh, so all you need is uh, a machine with Docker installed, AWS account, and an S3 bucket. So let's get started. All right, so the first step is we need uh, to spin up Trino locally, and we will leverage version 4 475. So let me share my screen. All right. So the first step is, hey, again, these uh, repositories and code is available readily, right? So let's take a look at that Docker Compose. Um, here is a very simple Docker Compose. We will just use one uh, coordinator. Of course, you can add workers uh, uh, to, 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 the, to this, but let's keep it simple, right? So simple, one, one coordinator I have, right? And you will set your AWS access and secret key and the region, right? And then here, uh, we will uh, define uh, two catalogs, hive.properties and iceberg.property. I will show you in a second what the property file looks like. So let's explore hive.properties. And by the way, uh, just to uh, explain you what we're gonna do, we'll simulate some events are coming into S3, right? Parquet files, right? And then using Trino's compute incrementally, we're gonna fetch and we're gonna write them into the S3 table buckets. And of course, then you can query this uh, with any engine uh, uh, via glue IRC endpoint, right? So let's take a look at hive.properties. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see my screen. Connector.name is hive. The meta store that we'll be using is glue. I want to use glue as a hive meta store. So that's that's that. The region is set to US East 1. Um, then here you will put your AWS access secret key. Of course, you can use IAM uh, uh, role as well for authentication. But again, for now, I'm just using access and secret key. And then you set your region. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now let's take a look at iceberg.property. So uh, this is the iceberg.property. Let me collapse and then zoom in. So the connector name is going to be iceberg, right? Because if you see the diagram from raw, we're going to ingest data into S3 table buckets, right? So the connector name is iceberg. We're going to be using a REST catalog. And this is the endpoint for the REST catalog. Uh, HTTPS glue uh, dot the region. I'm using US East 1. So US East 1 dot Amazon AWS dot com slash iceberg. That's the iceberg endpoint. This is the warehouse. So the way the warehouse works here in S3 table is account ID, your AWS account ID or the catalog ID, catalog name, and then your uh, bucket name, right? So if you probably go to my S3 quickly, if I can open up uh, for you, just to uh, show you. So if I go here, uh, if I go to table buckets, here you may see that Soundmill dev, right? And I don't have any tables here inside that. So that's, that's the warehouse, right? Um, then what else I need to explain you? Yeah, rest everything is default, right? And then here you'll put your AWS access secret and region. So uh, hopefully the configuration makes sense, right? And then here is the Docker Compose file. So I'll pause the video, I'll spin up the Docker uh, stack uh, locally, and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so I, I paused the video, I, I put my credentials and I spinned up the Trino container running locally. Uh, you, you, here you can see, right? Now you, you can exact into the container. You can either use Docker desktop, right? Or you can use um, a terminal and just exact into it. Whatever works best for you, uh, you know, feel free to do that. And again, these commands will be readily available on the GitHub, right? For you to practice them, okay? Okay, so now the first step is, uh, what, we will, we, what we'll do is uh, we'll create uh, some um, uh, data points so we can play with, right? So on S3, we'll create a uh, table called raw events where, you know, parquet files are being dumped, right? So let's do that. So coming to my snippets, I am just going to create a, a table here. Again, if you have, um, so what I'm doing is I'm uh, creating a, a table and I'm going to insert some data into it. So parquet files are like created. So, but if you have uh, parquet files on S3, you can simply create an external table in Trino and then you can re re read it from there. So uh, what I'll do is again, I'm just going to create this table called raw events uh, on Trino. So let's start Trino by using the word Trino. This will start the Trino CLI and I can do show catalogs. And if I uh, run the command, I'll see a Hive and Iceberg, right? So great. Now uh, I will uh, create this particular table in Hive. So let's do that. Uh, it's, it's done. Now at this point, if I go to my uh, glue uh, catalog, uh, if I come here, if I refresh, hey, I see that raw events in the default. Cool, okay. So that, that works, okay. Uh, now, I'm going to insert some data point into it. Uh, again, simulating some data is coming in. So let's do that. Okay, so I did insert some data. Now let's verify if the data came into S3. So if I go to my bucket, if I refresh, 
Yeah, you can see raw events and I have some parquet files with some data. So again, uh, we are simply simulating at this point that some data is coming on S3, right? Um, you, again, if you have data, you can just create an external table. I am simulating some data. So I added some data now. Now let's explore how we can leverage Trino compute to ingest data from this incrementally into S3 table bucket, which is manage iceberg. Okay. So now what we will do is uh, we're going to create uh, a, 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 an iceberg table. So create table iceberg dot s3 table catalog dot events and i'm going to partition this by event type and event uh, timestamp so let's go ahead and create this table so i fired the command and this again we are using trino, trino cli at this point right so uh, again uh, once this is done i should be able to see a table in my s3 table buckets so if i probably go to uh, here i already have one as you can see events right so the table is there right now, what we will do is we'll, we'll ingest data into iceberg table incrementally. So now, uh, very simple, right? We insert into uh, our iceberg table. We select everything from our parquet source, which, is, which was raw events, right? And we have a condition here where event timestamp is greater than. So remember, when you are running for the first time, there's no data. So it's going to grab all the data points, right? When you run for the next time, it will, it will say from the iceberg, what is the max event timestamp I have? Okay. And then give me all the records greater than that timestamp. So this way, only new records are going to come in uh, to your iceberg, right? So now if I run this quickly, and this will uh, ingest data from our um, raw parquet files. Uh, in this case, as you can see, our raw parquet files into our S3 table buckets, which is an iceberg table, manage iceberg table. And it's done, right? Uh, you can verify now whether it worked or not. So I can simply run a query here. Right. So I can do that, select everything from iceberg.s3 table catalog.events and here you can see I have my two events. Uh, you should be able to also query this in Athena, the same data. Uh, of course, although you made it with Trino, but you should be able to query with Athena as well. So if I go and refresh, I do see an event and in Athena, if I do a preview table, I should see the same two records over here. And same goes for if you read with Spark as well, right? So here you can see event one and event two. Now we are going to insert some new data point that is coming in. So I'm going to insert that data into our uh, raw events, right? So here you can see uh, the data got added. So if I now query my raw table, I should have three items into it or three rows, right? Let's see. So you can see event one, event two, and event three. Now if I again fire the particular query, it will only, so what, 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 what would happen is when I run this one, right? So let me just run this, this query here. Select coalesces event timestamp, right? So if I just do semicolon at the end, uh, and here you can see we got the timestamp, right? So now what happens is it's gonna say, hey, give me everything from the raw table greater than equal to this particular timestamp. So this way, only new events are added to your iceberg table, okay? So if I run this one, now, I should be, uh, we should be able to ingest that event three, okay? So again, running. And now once that is done, I can now try to query my table. And I can see the three events that came in, right? Event one, event two, and event three, right? And you should be able to query with Athena as well. So if I run the same query again on Athena uh, here, right? Since we just inserted some new data points, right? Uh, it is running. And here I can see the three events over here. It's showing up perfectly, right? So works fine, right? So cool. So basically we were able to ingest everything using a Trino compute engine, right? Cool. Yeah. And now if you also want to run the compaction, you can run that with Trino as well. So for, you can easily fire alter table iceberg.s3 table catalog.events and you can say optimize. That's a, a procedure or optimize. And then you can provide the, the threshold over here, right? You can easily do that. Now it's very, very easy to schedule this also. You can either use, of course, Airflow, uh, you can use uh, yeah, what you call a Lambda functions to schedule these queries, or uh, you can even use step functions, right? Um, so I hope you enjoyed. Uh, these all steps are given on my uh, Medium blog. So in case if you wanna try them out, I would encourage you to, hey, go ahead, try this out because it's a very fun way to learn about Iceberg, to learn about AWS, to learn about different services. It gives you a good hands-on experience, right? So yeah. By, by the way, all the resources are, and are available readily, readily on my GitHub. So uh, go ahead and try it out. And with that being said, if you do have any other questions, uh, let me know your question in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to uh, help you out, right? Uh, with that being said, keep smiling, keep programming, and I will see you in the next video.